If you grew up in the late 90s and early 2000s and had access to the internet, I can almost guarantee that you played lots of Flash games. I know I certainly did. I spent hours upon hours playing such games as Red Remover, This Is The Only Level, or pac -Zon. Okay, so they weren't all winners, but I enjoyed them nonetheless. Many were very simple, but addictive, and looking back I really appreciate all the hard work that went into these games. My evenings at home and my afternoons in elementary school, thank you Adobe Flash. May you rest in peace. Everyone who played Flash games had a favorite website. Newgrounds, Armored Games, Ninja Kiwi, Cool Math. And thankfully, all of these sites are still up today. Some of them even use emulators like Ruffle to keep their old Flash games playable online. But for me, there was one website that rose above them all. It didn't have the best Flash games, not even close. But it made up for it with its undeniable charm and characters that are near and dear to my heart. And that website, my friends, is BigIdeaFun.com. What? Can you blame me? I was a good little Christian boy, and as all good little Christian children were in the early 2000s, I was obsessed with VeggieTales. Well, unless your parents were killjoys who didn't like giant pickles and slushies in their Bible stories, but I digress. VeggieTales is one of those special interests of mine, alongside the Super Mario series. I would even consider myself a VeggieTales historian. I can tell you all of the episodes of the original series in order, as well as each silly song that came with it. I spent hours as a kid watching behind the scenes videos of my favorite VeggieTales episodes and listened to audio commentaries when I was bored. Needless to say, I wasn't exactly the most normal kid, even for a VeggieTales fan. While I used to be embarrassed by my wealth of VeggieTales knowledge, I now embrace it. Several years back, I tried to start a VeggieTales-centric YouTube channel called Dude Tomato. That didn't take off, and I struggled to upload much, but I did accidentally end up starting a rumor about a new Christmas episode, which may have ended up being true after all. In retrospect, that's kind of wild. My video was even cited on Wikipedia at one point. Anyway, in recent years I have also made the live-action VeggieTales series, which I envisioned as a bizarro parody of VeggieTales, and they've become some of the most popular videos on my channel. All this to say, I love VeggieTales more than the average human being, and as a kid, Big Idea Fun was just another part of that. What is Big Idea Fun exactly? Well, it launched in 2002 as part of a revamp of Big Idea's website. It acted as a kids section of the site, complete with various activities, cards, and of course, games. It wasn't just VeggieTales games either. The site also featured games from Big Idea's other two shows at the time, 321 Penguins and the 2D Larry Boy spinoff. Unfortunately, the site stopped being updated in 2008, and by 2011, BigIdea.com was taken offline altogether in favor of a new site called VeggieTales.com. It featured some games from Big Idea Fun, but the majority were brand new, and I honestly didn't get into them that much. They were probably just as good, if not better, but the love I had for Big Idea Fun was unmatched. VeggieTales.com is still up today, but it's just a store now. The games were removed years ago. Feels like symbolism for what's happened to VeggieTales and Big Idea as a whole. But I really wanted to talk about the games on Big Idea Fun because I've never really heard people discuss them. I'm sure I wasn't the only kid who played on the site, and for those of us who did, there was a lot to keep us busy. So I thought I'd go over all the games on the site and figure out which one is best. Ranking style. A few quick things before we begin. First off, I'm only covering games that were directly on BigIdeaFun.com. That means games from the Jonah, Pirates, and Rumorweed sites are excluded. I may cover them in a later video though. Second, please don't take my ranking too seriously. I try not to let personal bias get in the way, but it can still happen regardless. Third, there are two games from the site that I had to exclude from the list. The first is Bumblyburg Map because I couldn't get it to load. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like I'm missing much, since it appears to have been more of an interactive ad for the show rather than an actual game. The other is Lyle's Breakout because it was never properly archived and I couldn't get it to work on the Wayback Machine, even with Ruffle. If I get access to either of these games in the future, I'll cover them in another video, but for now we have nearly 50 games to rank, so let's get to it. Roll film! Oh, that's what I get for working with peas! Pea paint. Okay, what even is this? You scrub your mouse over the screen to make a picture. Whoop de freaking do. You can even give up to show the full picture, which I kept doing because I have no patience for this. The game was not archived anywhere, but it thankfully still works on the Wayback Machine, so I guess it has that going for it. Bottom of the list, moving on. 
Why is there a piano on my cake? In Frost a Cake, you... Frost a cake. There are no interesting tools or anything related to VeggieTales in it. Apparently you could email your cake to people, but not now. Can't even think of any jokes, clever or otherwise. Moving on... Squirt! King George's Squirting Gallery? How could this game be more wronger? It's more wrong. Not more wronger. Don't question the me's grammar! Based on King George and the Ducky, you, uh... Squirt duckies. And you can squirt this frog. Oh, and this bar of soap. Wow, this is boring. The duckies never change their location, and there's just nothing to it. Landing gear. You know, that's not a bad idea. It just might work. Ship lander? Wow, a 3 2 1 penguins game. Not too many of them, which I guess is to be expected since the show really wasn't that popular. But let's see what we got. <laughs> Oh no, this one's bad. So you have to land the penguin ship. You can't hit anything and you can't land too fast. What should be a decent and fair challenge is just not. Some objects look like they're in the background, but apparently not. So you'll keep crashing over and over and over again, even when it doesn't seem like it's your fault. Not a good first impression, 321 penguins. You'll have to try harder. Blubberbop, blubberbop, blubberbop. Here we have Beakerbop, which I assume must have been popular on the site. Why do I think that? Because there are apparently three of them. And so far, I'm not impressed. The game seems alright at first glance. You control Larry Boy as he makes his way up to each stage in the Alchemist's Lair, collecting beakers along the way. If they were just simple platforming challenges, I might have liked this game a lot more. But unfortunately, Beakerbop suffers from two main issues. One is Larry Boy's movement. He's just so slow. Every time I died, a little part of me died inside because I'd have to make Larry Boy climb up the stage all over again. How did I die, you ask? Because of these stupid potions the alchemist keeps throwing. They're surprisingly hard to jump over and he always seems to throw them right at me. Beakerbop 2 had slightly better levels, I guess, but for some reason you have to enter a password to play, which I quickly found online. And then I didn't even get to experience Beakerbop 3 properly. Uh, apparently the person who uploaded this to Flashpoint had to do some workarounds to make the game playable. But as a side effect, there are a bunch of invisible walls that make the game more annoying than it already is. And yes, I know it says Beakerbop 2 at the bottom, but the title screen does say Beakerbop 3, so I guess someone overlook that. I must say, the Beakerbop series did not impress, but at least it's fun to say. Beakerbop! 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 It's time to jump! Jumpy Jr. is based on the first episode of VeggieTales, Where's God When I'm S -S Scared? I never liked that there was a stutter in the title. Anyway, in the game Bob and Larry send Jr. reminders that God is bigger than the boogeyman. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway, you jump on the bed as Junior and send those reminders to the monsters, which kills them, I guess. There's only five monsters to get rid of, so it's pretty short. It's fine. Now that's the true meaning of Christmas. No, it isn't. Wait. Is that Comic Sans? The Dinkletown Christmas Parade is sorta kinda a point-and-click story. Larry wants to dress up as the true meaning of Christmas for the Christmas Parade, so he goes to gather materials and build it. That's really it, unfortunately. All you do is drag and drop stuff, and there's not a lot to it. Kind of a shame, because it's a really cute story, and I like that Larry's costume is the nativity. But it's over before it really begins. I am feeling woozy! And just like that, we get another story with Queasy Rider. Junior was supposed to pick up his toys, but... He didn't. This causes him to slip on a skateboard, which takes him outside, runs into Bob and Larry, and sends them all plummeting to their death. But it's okay, because it was just a dream. Junior picks his toys up and wears a helmet to bed. Just in case. This story kinda creeped me out as a kid. Besides that, I don't have much to say. I put it above the Dinkletown Christmas Parade because it's drawn really well and has some fun transitions, but it's more so a comic than a game. I do like it, though. And is that Comic Sans again? I'm an egghead. Veggie Eggs has such an adorable presentation. The characters are all nesting dolls. I'd love to own these. Anyway, this is just a trivia game, and the questions themselves never change. If the trivia questions were different every time you played, this game would be much, much higher. But as it stands, it's cute for a one-time play and nothing else. 
Well, not for me, thanks. I'm full. This game is called All You Can Eat and is based on Lego My Ego. You play as Herbert and Wally, who need to eat the cotton candy off the citizens of Bubblyburg while also avoiding the alchemist, who sprays orange gas that will shrink them. Shrink too many times and you'll get captured by the alchemist. Honestly, this one's just boring. The layout is too simple, and while the alchemist will spray gas more frequently as the game goes on, it never gets much harder. I intentionally lost this one while recording so I could get it over with. Then I felt like I was too harsh on the game, and I tried it again, but... Nah, it's still too boring. The new Ronco for give a matic In the scramble matic music from VeggieTales will play and you have to click on the picture that matches. That's fine and all, the game's okay. But there's something way more interesting about this game that I want to talk about. Apparently, this was originally just the easy mode of the game. When the game first launched, there was a hard mode that featured more songs and I guess was somehow more difficult. The problem is, this version of the scramble matic was never archived, and even using Ruffle, the Wayback Machine just will not let me play this game. I even tried using other browsers and extensions, but no matter what I tried, the game just would not play. That's also why I couldn't play Lyle's Breakout, as well as some other games outside of BigIdeaFun.com like LarryBoy.com. If anyone can get these games working or archived, please let me know know because I would love to cover these. Anyway, let's move on to the next game. Pat, I'd like to solve the puzzle. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is false advertising. The game is called Slide Puzzles, but there's only one slide puzzle, and it's a pretty basic one at that. This is definitely just a me thing, but I've never cared for slide puzzles. I just don't have the patience for them. If you like slide puzzles, you'll like this one, but that's all it is really. The end of silliness slide puzzle is... another slide puzzle. Except this one's based on the episode that traumatized me for life as a kid, so it's better. Next! Pat, I'd like to solve the puzzle! <laughs> More slide puzzles, are you kidding me? At least there's three to choose from this time. In Thumbles, you can do a puzzle of Larry, Bob, or Junior. Neat. But you want to know the real reason it's better than the last two games? You can have the game solve it for you. Normally, I wouldn't like that, but if it means I don't have to suffer through another slide puzzle, I'm going for it. We can only go up from here. Crap. I'd like to solve the puzzle. Xerxes. Jigsaw. Puzzle. Well, we're not out of the clear for puzzles yet, but we're getting there. And thankfully, this is a jigsaw puzzle, and a pretty simple one at that. And it's based on Esther, the girl who became queen, so that's a plus. There are three difficulties, and if you complete the puzzle under the time limit, regardless of the difficulty, you get a free wallpaper for your computer. Unfortunately, that part doesn't seem to work anymore, because when I tried to get the wallpaper, it crashed the game. Oh well. I would have liked this a lot better if the harder difficulties gave you more pieces to work with, but unfortunately the only thing that changes is the time limit. It's not a slide puzzle, so I guess I can't complain too much, but it's... fine. Moving on. <laughs> Scuba, scuba, scooby dooby dooba, here we go, scuba! Come on! I can't believe they made a game based off of the Stuff Mart rap. Too bad it isn't that interesting. You play as one of the scallions, who I guess is having a dream about scuba diving. You gotta collect all the gold and pearls to progress to the next level. If you take too long or get hit by too many enemies, the scallion wakes up and you get a game over. And this game is alright, just kinda slow. It's also pretty easy. You'd have to try to lose this game, which is exactly what I did to see the game over screen. It's mildly entertaining to see a human scuba diver, but besides that, there isn't much in this game that sticks out. Makes you wonder what kind of game we could have gotten instead if we had gone. Bungie, bungee, 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 here we go, bungee. Come on. Memories, my memories. This is Junior's Memory Game. It's memory. It's fine. Memories, my memories. This is King George Character Match. It's memory. It's fine. Wait, again? Okay, so I guess this is a little bit better because it's themed after King George and the Ducky. And each match gives you a bio of one of the characters. But there isn't much to it at the end of the day. But what really elevates this above Junior's memory game is that you can play Pong with QWERTY while you wait for the game to load. It's a cute reference to the time QWERTY played Pong in the show. Not much else to say, so let's just move on. Memories, my memories. This is Musical Memory Match. It's memory. It's fine. 
Wait, really? <sighs> to give this one credit, it's kind of cool. You have to match records that are playing songs from VeggieTales. When they're all matched up, you get a picture. Anyway, that's enough memory games. Let's move on. Memory. My memory. This is the Silly Song Matching Machine. It's been- ah! You can't make yeast up bigger with plastic eggs! The Experts is based on an Easter Carol, which I really like because it's my favorite episode of VeggieTales. That's also why I'm sad to say that I've never enjoyed this game all too well. Easter eggs are coming down the chutes, and you have to direct them into the carts. This is way easier said than done, though, because 1. The eggs move too fast and too slow somehow, and 2. Keeping track of which levers control which chutes is very overwhelming and confusing. I've played this game since I was a kid, and I still still struggle hard with this. I really wanted to place the experts much lower on the list, but I suppose I might just be bad at the game? I'd say check it out for yourself and see how you feel about it. Playtime is over. Veggie Playground is a cute game. The veggies are at a playground and you just drag them onto a piece of playground equipment and watch them have fun. If you leave them off the playground for too long, they actually get sad, which is an adorable touch. There really isn't a lot to this one, and I'm probably being way too easy on it, but the game is just too charming to be placed any lower. Billy has more toys than you! Oops! Louie ran into something! No joke here, just wanted to say that my sister and I found those really funny when we were younger for no reason. Taking place after the toy that saved Christmas, Dinkle Dinkle Little Star has you play as Buzzsaw Louie, who needs to sled down to Dinkle Town to deliver a star for the town's Christmas tree. There's not much to this one really. It's just two stages, they're not very interesting. Some of the hitboxes are a bit wonky though. Also I encountered a glitch while recording where I respawned in the exact same place that I lost a life, so that was annoying. If you're really bad at the game, you can just skip to the ending which is kinda lame. This game is completely serviceable, but it definitely could have been way better. Goodbye, In Flight Over Bumblyberg, you gotta shoot plungers at the Angry Eyebrows. More Angry Eyebrows appear in each stage, and if you run out of ammo, you have to wait until this white star thingy appears on screen and you collect it. That's the whole game. It's okay, I guess, but I just wish there was a little more to it. Man, these Larry Boy games haven't been very good so far. They make my old Larry Boy YouTube poop look pristine by comparison. I get to go all the way to Princess Lol. Ha! Your turn. Still stuck. Lol. You're a bad bunny. This is Build a Better Bunny, based on Rat, Shack, and Benny. All you gotta do is assemble chocolate bunnies. It starts out pretty simple, but with each bunny, the pieces become smaller and more numerous. Still, it's pretty easy. And since you only have to put together five bunnies, the game is a little too quick for my liking. <laughs> Wow, you sure make a nice bunny! Thanks, Mr. Lunt. You wanna make an omelette, you gotta break some eggs. Omelette's Quest is based on the Omelette segment from Lyle the Kindly Viking. In this game, you guide Jimmy, er, Omelette, through the maze to get his beloved eggs cooked light and fluffy. Each level has a time limit, so you gotta move fast. The mazes are pretty dark, but if you grab a torch, you can increase your view a bit. There isn't a lot to this game, but I found it oddly addictive. I'm probably being too easy on Omelette's Quest, but look, I'm just glad this game was decent. The Thanksgiving Story! Madame Blueberry's Thanksgiving Party is more like what I was hoping the Dinkletown Christmas Parade would be. Madame Blueberry is throwing a Thanksgiving party for her friends, and you've gotta help her. You make invitations, shop for what she needs, which takes an obscene amount of time by the way, and uh oh, the leaves break through the roof of her treehouse and leave a mess everywhere. Larry the Cucumber gasps when he sees the mess. Bob the Tomato shifts uneasily. But it's okay, because they still have fun, and Madame Blueberry is thankful for her friends. There might not be much to this one, but it's really cute. John claude narrates the story too, which is a nice touch. But the best part is that in between each section of the game, there's a loading screen where you can make Madame Blueberry bump into trees! <laughs> That's funny. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut! Jelly Jammers is a pretty simple game where you control Michelle as she helps her grandma make jelly-filled pastries. 
You gotta grab him, fill him with just the right amount of jelly, and put him up. Over the course of three rounds, the game gets harder. Grandmom will make pastries faster, and if you don't keep up, she'll knock them off the table. Hey, Grandmom, that's not my fault. You also gotta make sure the pastries remain hot, and that you don't underfill or overfill the pastries. Overall, Jelly Jammers was pretty fun, but man, does Michelle's voice get annoying after a while. <laughs> That's a big wall! This game is called Josh and the Big Wall. Based on, uh, Josh and the Big Wall, you control the Israelites as they walk around the walls of Jericho. There are three levels. Level 1 is Day 1, where you have to get four veggies to the end while dodging obstacles. Level 2 is Days 2 through 6, where you walk around Jericho and open umbrellas to protect the veggies from slushies. Finally, Day 7 is where you protect the Israelites from slushies as they yell and blow their horns. This game is pretty challenging, although part of the challenge comes from some weird hitboxes, but it is pretty fun. Although I swear the last level is impossible. I got so close, but the slushies kept hitting the Israelites anyway. You can skip to the end like in Dinkle Dinkle Little Star, but that's still pretty lame. Despite a few gripes, I still really like this game. But now I'm just left wondering how it would be if there was a mini game based on the Song of the Sabu, the silly song from this episode. It could have been really interesting, and we would have gotten answers about the song that we've all been dying to know, such as if the hippo sees them, if the poor mute Sabu was successful in communicating the imminent danger to the passengers, if the boy was injured, why the sad Sabu was sad, and most importantly, if the canoe was wood or a but oh well, I guess we'll never know. Hurry up and tell the story. My head's starting to sweat. Based on Sumo of the Opera, Sweat and Sumo has you go through three rounds of training in order to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Apollo Gourd. The game uses mouse controls, but they actually work pretty well. Your total score from training determines how well you'll do in the Sumo match. As a kid, I always lost to the Apollo Gourd, but this time I was actually pretty decent at the game and I managed to tie with him. Not sure if you can win the match or not, but this was still a pretty good game regardless. Oh, thank goodness, an actually good Larry Boy game. In the mess of the press, the printing press of the Daily Bumble is going crazy because Bob here accidentally dropped his lunch into the machine. So it's up to Janitor Larry the Cucumber, who may I remind everyone is not Larry Boy, to collect the flying newspapers and unload them where they can be safe. In each stage, you have to collect and unload 30 newspapers, but as you progress, more and more parts of the machine start to rain down as well. Getting hit by any will dent your bin, and since the Daily Bumble apparently only has one bin, if it gets damaged enough, you lose. I don't have much to say besides the fact that it's fun. It's really cool that the game puts a spotlight on a minor character like Janitor Larry. I'm just glad this one turned out fine, because Larry Boy really does deserve to have better games. Speaking of which, maybe I should talk about the Larry Boy and the Bad Apple video game sometime. What do you all think? Showtime! Remember All You Can Eat? Well, Showtime Chauffeurs is a way more interesting and fun take on what that one was trying to do. Based on the Star of Christmas, you drive around, pick up passengers, and take them to the theater. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. Not only do you have to fill a certain quota within a time limit, but there are a bunch of really annoying carts that follow you. I mean, they are relentless. If you hit one, you'll lose your passengers and have to pick them back up again. And by the way, you can only hold two passengers at a time. All this adds up to a decent challenge that I didn't expect much of going in. If I had any nitpicks, I'd say that it's easy to get stuck while changing directions because the carriage is so big, but you get used to it over time and it hardly ruins the game. It's popcorn! Let's eat it! Based on the episode Are You My Neighbor, Space Corn has you control the gourds, Jerry for easy, Jimmy for hard, as they fly through space. You have to eat a certain amount of popcorn and candy corn before time runs out, while also avoiding the asteroids that fly by. Holding down the space bar lets you go faster, but as a result it's also harder to control. This game's pretty fun. I remembered not liking it all too well when I was a kid, but then I realized it's because I always used to play on hard mode because I wanted to play as Jimmy. Yeah, no wonder I didn't like it, it is hard. But even if you play on easy, it's still a decent challenge and I found it surprisingly addictive. ADVENTURE TIME! 
This was another thing that made me laugh way too hard as a kid. I didn't know what a mirage was, so that was probably why. Junior's Own Adventure is more of a choose-your-own-adventure story than an actual game, but I think it's pretty charming. It's based on the parable of the lost sheep, and the game has many different paths to choose from. Suddenly the game overs though, which is kinda lame because I don't think they make much sense. Take this cave section for example. I gotta choose which way to go, and I spot what looks like sheep tracks on the right. I choose that option and apparently that was the wrong one? Whatever, the dead ends aren't a big deal. Junior's own adventure is pretty simple at the end of the day, but the adventure is fun and the artwork is adorable. These two games are physics puzzlers, I guess? You know the ones I'm talking about. In Spaced Penguin, you have to shoot Kevin into the penguin ship, while in Doom Funnel Chasers, you have to shoot a duct tape ball into the Doom Funnel. You gotta take the directional pull of the plants into account, and while it can take a while to understand, it's not too bad. You get more points based on how many tries you took on each stage, as well as how many distance bonuses and flags you collected in the process. The two games are very solid, even if it takes a while to get used to their physics. Not much else to say, I really enjoyed these games. Neither game is clearly better than the other, so I decided to have them share a spot. They can't beat Classic Red Remover, though. Aw oh, yeah, that's more like it. Number nine. Presumably taking place after the end of silliness, you play as Larry and try to beat Jimmy in donut hockey, which is both an air hockey clone as well as a waste of perfectly good donuts, but I digress. This one's pretty fun as an air hockey clone, but I do think some of the hitboxes are off. Sometimes I swear I hit the donut, but the game says I didn't, and Lovey here just loves to point out when I fail. He's good, gotcha! Oh well, at least Archie roots for me. Nice shot! Jolly good! Hooray! Thanks, Archibald. Your words of praise keep me going strong. It more than makes up for you cancelling silly songs with Larry and giving Larry a nightmare that traumatized me as a kid. Number this game is called Duke and the Great Pie War, based on, uh... Duke and the Great Pie War, the goal is to catapult Mr. Lunt into a bucket of slime. You gotta make each shot before time runs out, and as the game goes on you'll have less time to do so. Every so often you'll be given a trivia question based on the episode. If you answer correctly, you'll be given extra points. I remembered not being very good at this one as a kid, but now I think I'm a little too good. I played for about 8 minutes before getting a game over. Still, I think there was a decent amount of challenge, and I surprisingly had a lot of fun with this one. Okay, so before I talk about Hop, I just want to say how disappointed I am that there is no Flash version of Squid Tack Toad. See, this game's theming is based on the 321 Penguins episode, The Cheating Scales of Bulamanka, which entirely centered around the fictional game Squid Tack Toad. It seemed really interesting, and it was just begging for a Flash equivalent on Big Idea Fun, but that's not what we got. Instead, this game is just Cubert. Cubert? Yeah. Cubert. Who's gonna name their game Cubert? If you like Cubert, then you'll like this game. Luckily, I do like Cubert, although I'm admittedly way out of practice. I kept falling constantly while recording footage for this, but that's kind of expected since the perspective and controls for Cubert haven't aged particularly well. Speaking of controls, why the heck are J, K, N, and M the keys chosen for this game? I know it'd be weird for the arrow keys or WASD, but there had to have been a more comfortable key combo. Regardless, it's a fun time once you get used to playing it. Still wish we got Squid Tack Toad, though. Alright, I have a major complaint about this game that I've been holding on to for years. The game says this is Philippe's Alphabet Soup, and the game's description on the website says it's Philippe, but that's not Philippe. You see, this Chef P here is clearly the same as a Chef P from Esther, the girl who became queen. And was that P Philippe? No. It was Jean-Claude. This P was Philippe. How did they get this wrong? Oh my gosh! Anyway, that's my only complaint. This game's pretty fun. You spell out words from letters in the alphabet soup, and a fun cutscene related to the word plays afterward. You can even ask for a hint if you get stuck. The cutscenes really are the star of the show here. They're obviously just pictures of the characters being animated, but they're charming. Like, look at this cutscene. The word is blink, but they can't seem to find any veggies who have eyes, which is strangely common in Veggie Tales. But then they go over to Cordy, who loads up a pair of eyes and then blinks. Now that's comedy, baby. Jean-Claude's... <coughs> 
the Leaps alphabet soup has a lot of charm going for it, so it's a pretty good time. Number five. I'm gonna cut to the chase. I really like Light Brigade. It's as if a 3-2-1 Penguins game was on cool math or something. Based on Runaway Pride at Light Station Kilowatt, you have to get these light bulbs to the goal. Sometimes they need to be certain colors, and you have to play certain things in their path so that they can make it to the goal in the correct state. It's a simple game that really puts your brain to the test. I still haven't even finished all the levels yet, so I'd say it's decently challenging. If I had one complaint, it's that occasionally there will be a path that you swear will work, but it just doesn't. Look at this level for instance. If the light bulbs were to use this path, it would bring them to the goal no problem, but it ends up not working because... I guess the light bulbs are too slow. Whatever, that doesn't change the fact that Light Brigade is a really good time. I've been really impressed by the quality of the 3 2 1 Penguins games on the site. I mean, Ship Lander sucked, but all the others were pretty good. You'd think they would receive the short end of the stick compared to Veggie Tales, but there was clearly a lot of work put into them. I'm glad I checked them out. Does anybody remember the classic Flash game Ballistic Biscuit? Apparently it also had a Club Penguin clone? Well, Larry's Wild Water Ride is a VeggieTales clone of Ballistic Biscuit. Perhaps a little too much in fact. I think the visuals are a little too similar, but whatever, the game's still great. You use the mouse to control Bob, who is being pulled along by Larry's boat. Of course, you can avoid the obstacles that come your way, but if you click to jump over them instead, you get extra points. There are five levels, with each one adding new obstacles and changing what Bob is riding on. From a life preserver, to a pair of skis, to a single ski, to a surfboard, and then finally, nothing. There's not much else to say other than the fact that the game is really good. Ballistic Biscuit was one of those Flash games that knew how to use the mouse in an intuitive and fun way. And because Larry's Water Ride is a clone of said game, it has the same strengths. Perhaps it could stand to be a little bit different, but it doesn't change the fact that it's still a great time. Besides, Bob's animation when he gets hit is just funny. Huh? 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 I could do this all day. Veggie Pileup is just a Tetris clone, but I like it. It's fun to see these characters take the place of Tetrominoes, even if the shapes of some of them can make you second guess yourself on whether or not they'll fit. To be fair, if Tetris wasn't a great game, this game wouldn't be so high on the list, but luckily for Veggie Pileup, it is a great game. I'm not even good at Tetris and I like it. Speaking of clones though. <laughs> Jerry is back, clowns chomping at his stem, Jerry's our hero, Jerry just can't be be, yeah. Okay, I'll stop, sorry. Remember how Hop was just Cubert, Larry's wild water ride was just Ballistic Biscuit, and Veggie Pileup was just Tetris? Well, Jerry's cheeseburger madness is just Pac-Man. But that's perfectly fine, because the game has some small differences that make it a decent Pac-Man clone. For starters, the game is clearly based off of his cheeseburger, one of the most legendary silly songs in all of VeggieTales. You play as Jerry, eating cheeseburgers instead of dots, while trying to avoid the Burger Bell clowns, who replaced the ghosts. The biggest difference between this game and Pac-Man is that the number of clowns actually increases over the course of the game. That makes it a bit easier than normal on the first few levels, but later on it gets a little bit scary. I got a game over on level 6 because I had to avoid 6 different clowns instead of the usual 4 ghosts you would find in Pac-Man. It might be a small change, but I gotta admit it made the game a smidge more challenging. I'm probably overhyping Jerry's Cheeseburger Madness, but it really is a Pac-Man clone done right, which for an early Flash game is decently impressive. <laughs> If you played on BigIdeaFun.com as a kid, I think you know exactly which game is number one. And that honor goes to Larry's Lab. It's pretty simple at the end of the day. Larry has created a science lab with a bunch of weird ingredients with wacky names such as... Crystallized Calarium. Fully unsaturated Transformium. Hydrolyzed Chaosomy. Deoxygenated Elemental P. Anaphorium. Medium Plasma. Basic stuff we all learned in chemistry class, I know. You select the ingredients and mix them together, and from there you see what happens. There are so many funny animations, from the beaker turning into a swan to Frank and Celery growing out of the beaker, and all the while Bob has many hilarious reactions to the results. Yo! 
You know, Larry, we only have so many of these flats. Well, that could have gone better. Larry even has a secret formula that involves mixing all the ingredients in a specific order. This creates a freaking tornado that almost destroys the lab. Larry? What are you doing down here in the dark? Um, science? Well, just be careful, alright? You can't stand in the way of progress, Bob! At the end of the day, the game is very simple, but it's just so darn entertaining and charming. I spent hours as a kid trying all of the different combinations, and I'm sure many others did too. Larry's Lab was so popular, in fact, that it was one of the few games to return when Big Idea moved to VeggieTales.com, with updated visuals to boot. Unfortunately, this version was never archived, so good luck trying to get Flash to work on the Wayback Machine in 2023. It didn't work for me. Regardless, we still have the original version, and I was very happy to play the game again for this video. With its fun premise and wacky animations, it's no contest that Larry's Lab is the best game on BigIdeaFun.com. This is getting pretty weird, Larry. That took a while. I'm gonna be honest, I've been working on this project on and off for several months. I want to make more videos like this in between my short films, and I thought this would be an easy first video. Boy was I wrong. Regardless, I really did enjoy looking back on all these silly Flash games. Like I said at the beginning of this video, they were far from the best games out there, but as a lifelong VeggieTales fan, they bring a smile to my face, even the bad ones. And during production for this video, I gained a little more appreciation for 321 Penguins as well. Maybe I'll talk about that show more sometime. But anyway, that's it for now. Just remember that God made you special, he loves you very much, and Larry's Lab is a national treasure. And Phil Vischer, if you're watching this, please hire me. I'd love to work for you. I'll do anything. I'll even shine your shoes. Just hire me. Please, 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 please. <laughs>